Hello, welcome back to my channel, Thriving Not Just Surviving. I'm your host, Jolly Henry. Today we are going to talk about how to lose weight without dieting. We're going to talk about intermittent fasting specifically. Now before you go, hang on, isn't that just another diet? I believe it's actually different from a diet because whereas regular diets, you're calorie constricting but eating whenever you want during the day, intermittent fasting is quite different because you're um, stopping eating at certain times of the day so or every other day depending on which method you choose. So it is a scheduled way of eating rather than just pure calorie restriction. I'll be honest with you, I absolutely hate dieting. <laughs> I hate being hungry. I'm lucky enough that because I've always been fairly sporty, I, I didn't really ever have to diet when I was younger. I did have to watch my weight because, you know, I have genes, I guess, um, especially on the African side of my family that predispose me to putting on large amounts of weight if I don't exercise and if I just sort of eat whatever I want. But um, because I kind of always liked healthy eating and I always did a lot of exercise, I didn't ever really find myself having to specifically diet to lose weight. But of course that all changed as I got older and specifically when I had children. Losing the baby weight after my first two children was the most challenging time in terms of dieting for me. Um, having said that, I did still manage to lose all the weight for both the children that I had. The way in which I did it at the time was pure calorie restriction. With the second child though, my youngest daughter, I did, I came across the method of intermittent fasting and I thought, why don't I give it a go? What I found was that because at the time I was still breastfeeding, it just, it was too much for me. You know, obviously with a young child, you're already very, very tired and you're already not sleeping very well. I found that intermittent fasting just made me so hungry at night that I wasn't able to even sleep properly. So I kind of abandoned it and thought, this is not for me. I'm not gonna bother trying it again. Sometime uh, last year, I actually came across intermittent fasting again and I decided I was going to give it another go. And my reasons for that was not just about weight loss. In fact, it wasn't really so much about weight loss at all because I was in pretty good shape. It was more about the health benefits and the anti-aging benefits you get from intermittent fasting. And that's what I want to go a little bit more into today. Excuse me, I'm just gonna, this is shining right in my eyes. Yeah, that's better. Intermittent fasting has fantastic benefits aside from just weight loss. It increases um, heart health, it lowers cholesterol, it lowers blood pressure. As we get older it protects us against age-related diseases such as cancer and uh, diabetes. Um, and one of the reasons why it does that is because of a process called autophagy. Now, autophagy is a, a Greek word meaning self-eating. It's a natural process that happens in the body whereby the body eats dysfunctional cells which are no longer needed. Things like, you know, cells which have got um, error in the DNA which might turn into cancer further on down the line. The body will actually mop up those cells and then kind of get rid of it through the natural waste processes of the body. Um, and also things like aging cells, cells that just aren't, um, aren't performing um, at an optimal level or, or performing very efficiently, it will mop up and get rid of those cells. Autophagy happens at a very high rate when you're younger. It's, um, the body is very efficient at doing this. And as we get older, it decreases. So our body gets worse and worse at doing this autophagy, which is one of the reasons why we start seeing some of the signs of aging, such as, you know, saggy skin, loss of collagen, loss of um, elastin, um, and also the age-related illnesses, um, such as high blood pressure and heart disease and cancer and that kind of thing. If there's something that we can do to increase autophagy and to make our bodies more efficient at it, I want in on it. And intermittent fasting is one of those things. It's fantastic for longevity. Another way in which intermittent fasting is really, really good for us is that it increases insulin sensitivity. If our bodies are insulin resistant, it means that when we eat carbohydrates and our body needs to digest the glucose, our body will release insulin to digest that glucose. If we're insulin resistant, our bodies need to release more of the insulin because our bodies are not very good at recognizing that insulin. And if that process continues, then eventually the body stops recognizing insulin at all, and it also stops producing insulin, and that's what uh, essentially leads to diabetes. So insulin resistance is a precursor to diabetes. Now the opposite of that, insulin sensitivity, is where our bodies only require a small amount of insulin in our blood to be able to digest that glucose and it means that our bodies are very efficient at digestion and it means that you know we're in fantastic health so younger children will tend to have more insulin uh, sensitivity and then people as they get older their insulin they become more insulin resistant and it's typically as a result of poor lifestyle choices like eating too much sugar not doing enough exercise so 
Intermittent fasting actually increases our insulin sensitivity. So it is fantastic for our health, it's fantastic for our digestion. Oxidative stress is the process by which our cells degrade by being exposed to oxygen, and that's oxidation. Again, that's another process which is very aging, but what intermittent fasting does, it slows down that process whereby our cells are not getting stressed out so much by, by being exposed to oxygen, and therefore our life is getting prolonged. So it, that's why intermittent fasting is so good for longevity, and also for, you know, for the way you look, and for the way you feel, and also for weight loss. So it's a fantastic all-round health package. Now, let's talk a little bit about how to do it properly because a lot of people know that I do this on a day-to-day -day basis. For me, it's a way of life now. It's not just a diet that I've gone on and will come off when, I, when I've lost the weight. This is how I eat now. There's several different methods. You know, one of the methods is you can eat a full meal, you can eat a full normal day eating whatever you want on one day, and then the following day you eat between five and 800 calories. And then the, the day after that you eat normally again. So that method is, you know, you're kind of one day on, one day off. I found that method was terrible for me. It made me so hungry that I couldn't sleep and I just ended up abandoning the diet. So the method which has been really fantastic for me and which I would suggest you try first off is what's called the 16-8 method. Now that method is where you have a fasting period of 16 hours, so you eat nothing for 16 hours, and then you have a feeding period of eight hours. Um, and during that feeding period, you are actually trying to, well, some people call it a feasting period, you're actually trying to eat so that you're really satisfied to make sure that you are able to then go through the entire 16 hour fast without feeling hungry. So what I do is I start eating at 12 o'clock and I have a big lunch at 12 o'clock because I'm breaking my fast. And then I will have, typically have an afternoon snack around four or five o'clock. And then I'll have my dinner at about 7.30 and stop eating at eight o'clock. Make sure I've finished everything before eight o'clock. And then I'll eat nothing until 12 o'clock the next day. Now, some of the ways in which people go wrong, and this is something that I did wrong right at the beginning, is that I don't know where this came from, but there's this crazy myth that exists on the internet that you can still eat up to 80 calories, I think it is, during the fasting period and you're not breaking the fast. Now, I can tell you right now, that is absolute <laughs> So you really do need to eat absolutely zero calories during that fasting period. If you're having tea or coffee in the morning, no sugar in your tea or coffee, no sweetener in your tea or coffee, because a lot of people think, but sweetener's zero calories, isn't that fine? No, because what sweetener does, it, because it's sweet, it triggers an insulin response, so it breaks that insulin sensitivity that we're talking about, and it actually stimulates your hunger. So it means that you'll be, be really, really hungry, and it'll be A, it'll be harder for you to keep fasting until the time that you're actually supposed to break the fast, and B, you've already kind of broken the fast anyway, so all of those positive benefits I was talking about in terms of the autophagy and the insulin sensitivity, etc., you're not going to be getting that anymore. So, you, you know, if you have tea or coffee in the morning, you have to have it absolutely black, with no, no sweetener, no sugar, no milk, no milk substitutes, no coffee creamer, powder, anything like that, zero calories. Also things like, I've heard people say, oh, I, I do um, intermittent fasting, but I have a bulletproof coffee in the morning. Now, a bulletproof coffee is a coffee with either a big lump of butter or a big lump of coconut oil in it. That's got a massive amount of calories. You may as well have just had a breakfast. So you really do have to eat absolutely nothing. You can drink water, you can drink herbal teas, you can drink black tea or coffee, but you can't have any calories. So that means no coconut oil, no butter, no milk, no, you know, I hope I've made my message clear because for years I did this wrong. I'd heard people say that it was fine to have a bulletproof coffee because that's not breaking your fast. And I'd heard people say it was fine to have up to 80 calories so I could have a piece of fruit, for example. And that's just, no, that's not, that's not intermittent fasting. So please don't do that if you want to do intermittent fasting. The other mistake um, I've heard people make, and what I, what I made before as well, is not eating enough during the feeding window. So during the feeding window, you really do need to make sure you're eating until you're full. So you can't just go and, you know, chow down on loads of donuts and McDonald's Happy Meals, like massive portions and stuff, and still expect to lose weight. You do still need to eat healthily. However, 
you need to eat a big, nice size portion and, and just stop when you're, when you're full, you know? So make sure that you've eaten enough that you're not actually um, hungry anymore at each meal. And that should be enough, you know, as long as you just follow those rules, it should be fine. But what kind of results can you expect to see then from intermittent fasting? I'll talk to you about the results that I had. After I lost my baby weight, I got back to my original size that I was before I had ba a baby for, for both pregnancies. However, I always had this kind of belly pouch, this stubborn belly pouch that just would not go. It didn't matter how much calorie restriction I did, it didn't matter how much exercise I did, it didn't matter how many high intensity interval sessions or weight training or whatever I did, this stubborn belly fat just would not go. And after a while, I told myself, well, it's probably never gonna go. You're probably only gonna get rid of it if you have surgery, you know, which is which wasn't something that I wanted to do but I just I just sort of told myself maybe this is just my body now and you just have to accept this is what your body looks like but intermittent fasting within oh, I'm not I'm not joking about three weeks the first three weeks of intermittent fasting it was gone and I'll show you what I mean see now completely flat toned you can even see the muscle as that and it was not like this for years and years after I'd had children um, you know, I just didn't think that I would ever get my flat belly back again, but with intermittent fasting I did. And the other thing I experienced was that I'd had cellulite on, on my knees, I kind of this pocket of cellulite above my knees since I was 15. So at that point, it would have been 28 years. I had this cellulite on my knees for 28 years. I had tried everything to get rid of the cellulite. You can imagine when I was a teenager, I was much slimmer than I am now as an adult. And despite being slim, I still had this stubborn cellulite that I could not get rid of no matter what I did. Intermittent fasting, again, within the first four weeks, I'd say, four, between four to six weeks, the cellulite was gone. I could not believe it. I thought that I was never ever gonna get rid of that cellulite. I thought that was just my body and I had to just accept it. And now it's gone and it hasn't come back again. So I think, and I've heard this anecdotally from other people, is intermittent fasting is fantastic for getting rid of those stubborn pockets of fat which will not shift through other means no matter what you do. So it's more than just a weight loss method. It is it is a weight loss method that is very successful at losing any excess weight, but it's also very successful at losing the stubborn bits of fat which you thought you were never gonna get rid of. And you know, coupled together with its, its longevity and its anti-aging and its health benefits, I just think it's the most fantastic um, weight loss program on the planet. And as I said, to me, it's not a diet. When you're eating in your feeding window, you don't have to count calories, you don't have to restrict your portion. You can eat a nice big portion, make sure you're full and actually stop eating when you're full. So what I always hated about diets was the constant feeling of hunger. Uh, now people tell me, but with intermittent fasting, aren't you hungry because you're starving yourself in the morning? And, uh, but I always say no, because basically throughout the night, your metabolism kind of slows down as you're sleeping. And then when you wake up, your metabolism doesn't really get kick-started. It gets kick-started by eating. As soon as you eat, that's when you start feeling hungry. So if you're feeling hungry all throughout the day, that's because you've had breakfast. But if you skip breakfast and just don't start eating until 12, then I find that I don't really feel hungry. I might get a little bit of hunger kind of around 11, 11.30, but that's so close to when you're gonna be eating your lunch anyway. And in the days when I used to have breakfast, I still used to get hungry then anyway. So, you know, it's, it's not really that much difference. There is another way of doing it. If you feel like you're one of those people, because some people have said to me, Jolly, I am way too grouchy in the morning to not have breakfast. If I don't have breakfast, I'll become an absolute so, you know, if that's you, if you know that you absolutely cannot cope and can't tolerate and can't function without breakfast in the morning, you could do it the opposite way around. So you could eat breakfast, but you could skip your dinner. Still a, an 8-16 diet, um, feeding, fasting period, but um, you're switching it around. Instead of skipping breakfast, you're skipping your dinner. But the main thing is, during the fasting period, absolutely zero calories, and during the feeding period, eating until you're full. Healthy meals, obviously, that are high in fiber and high in vegetables and, you know, have enough protein. I'm gonna to talk to you more about the macronutrients you need to be getting into your diet. But uh, for now, I hope you found this helpful and useful. If you're enjoying my content, please hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I come out with new content. It's been fantastic talking to you about the success that I've had with intermittent fasting. If you have any comments, if you've tried this, if it's worked well for you, or if you have any questions, please do comment below. I'd love to answer your questions. I look forward to talking to you again next time. Bye.